Good evening, Faith. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Are you expecting God to show up this evening? Hallelujah. Okay, I didn't get a I didn't get a good enough response on that. I said, are you expecting God to show up this evening? Hallelujah. Amen. That's more like it. So let's prepare the atmosphere. <clears throat> let's make the way straight for the Holy Spirit to show up in this place. Amen. <clears throat> Our scripture reference <clears throat> for prayer this evening is 1 Timothy chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 1 through 4, and verse 8 it reads, I exhort therefore that, <clears throat> first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life <clears throat> in all godliness and honesty. Why? Thank you, sir. For this is good. <clears throat> for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And verse 8. I will therefore that men pray where? Everywhere. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Lifting up what kind of hands? Holy hands without wrath and doubting. So let's believe God that he's going to show up. He's going to show out that the man of God will be anointed to do everything that God has set forth for this evening. Amen. Have you all been blessed so far? Amen. 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 So let's pull everything out of the man of God this evening. Let's make sure that he leaves empty. Make sure that he leaves saying, oh, they got everything out of me. I ain't got nothing left. Amen. <laughs> praise God. So let's begin by giving God some praise, magnifying his holy and righteous name. Father, we bless you this evening. We honor you. We magnify you. We exalt you. We give you glory. You are the most high God, the Messiah, you there is no other. You're holy, mighty, glorious, righteous. You are the Lord our God, and we thank you and praise you for everything that you are, everything that you have been, and everything that you will be. We bless the holy and righteous name of the Lord, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the Lord our comfort, our peace, our strong tower, our mighty fortress. We exalt you and give you glory in the holy name of Jesus. And Father, even though we know that there is much turmoil in this world, Father, we dwell in that secret place of the Most High. We abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We say, the Lord, you are our refuge, our fortress, our God, and you we trust. Only with our eyes shall we see and behold the wicked get their reward. So we're not moved by what we see, not moved by what we hear, not moved by what we feel, but our trust is in you, hallelujah. Our trust is not in princes or horses, our trust is not in political candidates, nor in our military forces, but our trust is in you. So Father, no matter what happens across the world, Father, we know that we are safe in your arms. Hallelujah. The safest place to be in the world is in the perfect will of God. And our, your perfect will is doing everything that you lead us to by the Holy Spirit. So, Lord God, we pray this evening for these United States of America. And we say, Lord God, that this country is not going under you. You have not forsaken us, but this country is going over. Father, for we are here, believers in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and we have not been appointed to wrath. So, Lord God, even though it may be things going on around us, we say it shall not come nigh us. We are even as the Jews as they were in Egypt. They were in Goshen, and they had light even though there was darkness in Egypt. So, Lord God, even though there may be darkness in this world, we shall have an illuminated path to provide so that we will have provision in every area of our lives. So, Lord God, we thank you now that these United States of America will be in it and we will be protected and we'll be safe through everything that comes our way. We pray for all our uh, individuals who are in positions of political authority. 
whether it be national, state, or local. We say that you have the heart of the king in your hand, and as the rivers of water, you turn it to and fro to do your will. So we pray that their hearts will be turned towards you. But Lord God, even if they do not obey, we say your will will be done either through them or in spite of them, but your will shall be accomplished. Also, Father, we pray for and stand with Israel. We pray for the peace of Israel. We pray for Prime Minister Bishop of Netanyahu, uh, all those who are in positions of advisory to him. We pray, Father, that they will do what is good in your sight concerning everything that involves that nation. We pray that they are protected, even as, Lord God, the those projectiles that went toward that land were struck down. Father, we pray that they will continue to be struck down and those people will be protected in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for all the nations that are standing with Israel. We pray that their hearts will not be turned away from Israel, but will be turned towards Israel, that your will will be accomplished in the name of Jesus. And Father, we say that this nation shall not turn its back, but will stand with them for we know, even as you said under Abraham, you will bless those that bless him, and you, Father, will curse those that curse him. So we pray that the United States shall be blessed because we stand with that nation in the name of Jesus. Also, we pray for all those who are in spiritual authority over us. We thank you, Father, that you've given us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfected of the saints, for the work of the ministry. So we pray that even as the man of God comes this evening, <clears throat> that Father, he will be anointed to preach your word, anointed to demonstrate your power, and that the people will be tremendously blessed in the name of Jesus. And Father, we will be remiss if we didn't pray for our own pastor. Hallelujah. We thank you for the ministry gift that you've given unto us. Pastor Kerrigan for Lady Raquel. We pray that they continue to have wide doors of utterance open unto them, that they will speak your word as boldly as they ought to speak and speak as the oracles of God, and that many will be saved, many will be delivered, and many will be set free. We pray, Father, that many also, Father, will be healed, even as the word goes forth under the anointing of God. And, Father, that we will walk in the boldness of the Spirit because of the teaching that you have given us. Also, Father, we pray for the founder of this church. We thank you for Bishop Butler and everything that you assigned to him to do across the world. We pray that his international ministry shall continue to increase and that everything that you assigned to him to do will be accomplished to your glory in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for all of the families and individuals that are represented here in this congregation of believers. Father, even for those who are visitors, Father, and friends that are coming out this evening, we pray that they will leave this place and know that they have been in the presence of God any need that they have, we pray that it shall be met. And Father, we call in that abundance, hallelujah. Even as we heard the word of God from the man of God, prosperity, Lord God, to the overflow. Father, for you desire to do more in these last days, and you shall do it through your people, hallelujah. So, Father, even as you desire above all things that we were prospering and being helped, even as our souls prosper, we pray that our cupboards will be full. Father, that we will have more than enough, that the entire harvest will be brought in. And we thank you and give you praise for it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And, Father, as we begin to enter in, Father, we're not moved by anything on the outside, but we are focused this evening on what you shall do on the inside in this place. Father, we have our mind on you. And Father, we say, use the man of God, use everything that you, from the praise, Lord God, to the benediction, the cause will come to pass your perfect will in this place. And we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise for it in the holy and matchless name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your name and praise you. We honor you and magnify you. We give you the glory. You are God and God alone, and worthy of the praise, worthy of the exaltation, worthy to be glorified and lifted up. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and worthy to, be, to receive glory, honor, and power in the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. draw your attention to the screens for the video.
Praise the Lord. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Let me get you to stand to your feet. I'm just going to go into the presence of the Lord tonight. Has God been good to anybody? We serve a good God. He's worthy of praise. Come on, let's just lift up our hands and our voices unto our good God. We worship you tonight. There is none like you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness to us, oh God. Oh, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, there's nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing about his goodness. Yes, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through, you have led me through the fire. In darkest nights, in darkest nights, you are close. I've known you as a father. I've known you as. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Said all. Good day. 
your goodness because all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Come on and lift your hands and glorify him. We will sing of your goodness all our days. Thank you for loving us, oh God. Oh, thank you for leading us. You are close like no other. Thank you for never leaving us. Thank you for always being by our side. Thank you, Father God, for being faithful. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Thank you, Lord, for never changing, for always being consistent. We bless your name and thank you for it. You are so good. Oh, we love you, Lord. Thank you for being our shepherd. Oh, we love you, we love you, we love you, Lord. Come on and sing. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me, defender behind me, I won't fear, I won't fear, I'm filled with anointing, I'm filled with anointing, my cup's overflowing, my cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me, no weapon can harm me, I won't fear, I won't fear, oh, said hallelujah, hallelujah, I am not, I am not alone, always guides me through mountains and valleys through mountains and valleys his joy is refreshing his joy is refreshing restores my soul restores my soul oh mercy and goodness
creator lives within me so i will walk in your peace your spirit lives within me my victory my victory your spirit lives within me so i will walk in your peace your spirit lives within me. my victory my victory your spirit your spirit lives within me so i will walk so i will walk in your your spirit lives your spirit lives within me.
on and lift it up to him this night. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, worship the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, we love you. Thank you for not leaving us by ourselves. You will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you that you said you inhabit the praises of your people. You said where two or three are gathered in your midst, there you are in the midst of us. So we welcome you into this place, Holy Spirit of the living God. We welcome you. Anybody sense his presence already? You know, I learned something studying the Welsh Revival. They were in a revival for a long time. And what they would do is although his presence was there, they would ask, they would say, come in a stronger way, Holy Spirit. Can we say, welcome, Holy Spirit? Come on, say it again. Say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Say, we want more of you. Then I was in Argentina in the midst of this church and revival, operating high levels of power. And I heard how the congregation prayed. They would cry out, mas, 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 more, more, more. We've experienced something wonderful in the previous two experiences, but I believe God has more. So for 30 more seconds, can you press in? and ask God for more. Chaz, can you sing out more? We want more, God. We need more, God, more of you, God, more. Oh! 
He's here. He's here. He's here. Let's just lift our hands. Father, we thank you. You are here. Just close your eyes. You say these words. You say, thank you, God, for miracles that are happening right now in my life. Now breathe that in. That's his presence. For those watching online, the presence of God is so strong in this building, but it's strong where you are too. Just step into it. Thank you, God, for healing us, for delivering us, for helping our families, for breaking addictions, for making a way where there was no way. In your name we pray, amen. Can we give a big clap to our worship team? Can we honor our pastor, Pastor Raquel, Pastor Carrick? We have two of the best leaders, right? Give three people a high five and say, God is here. And thank you for turning my mic up just a little bit more. Can you give, um, again, our singers and everybody playing instruments a big clap. They're, they're working overtime now. We got you on overtime. All right, you may be seated. Thank you very much. How many of you honestly can sense the presence of the Lord so strong in here? I'm going to go right into the word because God's going to really speak to us today. The Bible says, he who works his land shall have abundance. Somebody say, I shall, I shall have, have abundance. abundance. The word abundance means extremely plentiful, oversufficient, overflowing, more than enough. Somebody say that, say extremely plentiful, extremely. oversufficient, and more than enough. So again, it says he or she who works their land shall have abundance. So I want you to say this. Say, say I, shall I shall have abundance. Now put up your right hand and wave it like you get what I'm saying. It's going to happen. But then it says, but whoever chases fantasies lacks wisdom. So I beg you to really hear me. The world is trying to get all of us to chase fantasies. It comes through commercials. It comes through billboards. It comes through movies. It comes through music. Where the world is chasing fantasies. If you get this, then you get happy. If you do that, then you get money. But the Bible clearly says, he who works his land shall have, doesn't say might have, shall have abundance. Somebody say, I shall have, I shall have abundance. abundance. Say extremely plentiful, extremely. oversufficient, overflowing, 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 more than enough. So all day yesterday, Sunday, we talked about the miracle mentality. We said that a miracle is something extraordinary, uncommon, and not regular. So I want you to really hear me. 
because your 2024 is going to be extraordinary. It's going to be uncommon and it's not going to be regular. In fact, so many good things are going to happen to you, it's going to be weird. How many could use that? Just lift your hands, okay? Because what happens, as I say in my book called The Miracle Mentality, I, I talk about that if you're not careful, we get so caught up in life where we're in the mundane and we're in the messy and we're in the madness that we quit thinking about the miracles. The mundane is the day-to-day, -day, the chores, April 15th, tax day, right? You with me? Uh, dealing with things and situations. And your life can get mundane, and then sometimes your life can get messy. The word messy means disheveled, where things just feel messy. Your mind feels messy. Your life feels messy. Your relationships seem messy. But then it can escalate to the madness, which is the chaotic that could be with somebody in your family who's struggling with addiction. Has anybody ever had somebody in your family struggle with addiction and it just goes mad? Okay. It could be a divorce that you go through and it goes into madness. So we have to maintain our miracle mentality. Say that. Say, I need to maintain my miracle mentality. So you have to maintain it in the midst of the mundane, in the midst of the messy, and the midst of the madness. So then we said yesterday, the, the mentality is a mindset. It's a perspective, it's a point of view. So let me tell you again, you are gonna have an amazing year, 2024. Okay, clap your hands like it's gonna happen. now. Come on, keep clapping. Now, so, so Tim's story, are you saying I won't go through stuff? No, you will go through stuff. I call it bugs on the windshield. Say that, bugs on the windshield. Okay, if you, if you drive in Georgia at certain times of the year, are you with me? and you go even an hour somewhere, bugs on the windshield. But certain times of the year, if you decided to go to Disney World and drive all the way to Orlando in certain times of the year, look at me, there's going to be bugs on the windshield. Somebody lift your hands if you know what I mean. So bugs on the windshield, listen to this, number one, they can cause delays, delays. But they can also cause a detour because those bugs can hit so heavy, you have to pull over to a gas station if you're going a long distance to get the bugs off the windshield. So I'm telling you, you will go through some problems in 2024 because the Bible says that. It says in this life there will be what? Okay, so you're going to go through things. But I said go through things. Say bugs on the windshield. So there might be a delay. Watch. There might be a detour, but I'm telling you now, there's not going to be a devastation. Come on, clap your hands real loud. So say that. Say 2024 is my year. Say the next year too. And the, the year after that. Say, I live long and strong. Say, I have a miracle mentality. Wow. This will get in you. So let's go Bible again. Psalms 92 verse 12 says, the righteous, say that's me. It says, will flourish like a palm tree. 
So what I see you doing this year is flourishing. Not little tiny sprouts. I see you flourishing. I'm going to teach you why here in a minute. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. And then it goes on to say that they will still bear fruit in their older age. I'm going to tell you right now, 40 is not old. Could you imagine people complaining that they're 40? 50 is not old. Come on, somebody. 60 is not old. 70 is not even old. 80 is not old. 90, you're getting a little older. But we shall flourish in our older age. And watch this. And then it says, and and be fresh and green. Okay, so look at me. I'm going to help somebody here. I was speaking this in Michigan, and a person who's in the produce world said, in order for something to be all that, it has to be connected to the source. So when we are connected, watch, to the source vitality pours through as we are in this extra night of this move of God I'm so glad you came out on a Monday night and for you that are watching I'm so glad you're watching on a Monday night you know why because more vitality is coming into your life clap your hands like vitality come on somebody because the source the, the supernatural source, the miraculous source. As, as Pastor was talking about being overseas and them asking in Spanish for more. This is what's happening on this special extra night. God has given us more. So this is an interesting thing. That he that works their land shall have abundance. But it's an interesting thing that some of you don't realize that you have already been working your land and you're not understanding that payday is on its way. Come on now. See, when my father worked at Bethlehem Steel in, in Los Angeles, we, you know, we were lower income, but my mother said, we're lower income, but we're not lower class. So he, my father worked at Bethlehem Steel and my mother worked at Winchell's Donut Shop. It was like the Dunkin' Donut Shop down the street here. So th that's what they did. And I remember my mother used to say, uh, kids, we can't get it, but this Friday, your father gets paid and then we're gonna try to get it for you on Saturday. So I could not wait for this thing called Friday. <laughs> and so my father, who was a very good man, he, he used to try to celebrate little victories, even though we didn't have much, we would celebrate. So we'd go out for like milkshakes on Friday night. So even though we didn't have much, we would celebrate because of this thing called Friday where you got payday. So you, you better understand that payday is on its way because he or she who works their land, they shall have abundance. It's called the law of the harvest. So watch what I do with this tonight. You're going to love this. So your miracle is in motion. Go like this. This is a Tim story since the 80s. Go like this. Go. Your miracle's in motion. Sometimes I go to churches and they just come up to me and they go, hey. Because <laughs> I've been saying this since the 80s, like this. Hey. Even the lady at the hotel that I'm staying at here, she, she knew me because of the church that I go to in Nigeria, a church that she's part of. And, and she was talking about me and miracles and, 
and, and I've been teaching this for years, that your miracle is in motion. Now watch this. The miracle that's in motion for you, listen, is it comes two ways. Number one, sovereign. Say sovereign. sovereign. That means you did nothing to order it. And God just went like this, watch. Boom, here's a miracle. Bam, here's a miracle. It, it's better than when Oprah said, here's a car, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. It, it's, it's just sovereign. It, it's stuff that we don't ask for. Wave your hands. It, it, it's, it's God's surprises. You better get ready because this year, 2024, is going to be full of God's supernatural surprises. You better clap your hands. Come on, people. Come on, we got a flow in this place tonight. I'm building your faith. Say, this year is filled with supernatural surprises. And Pastor Carrick, they're sovereign. Because you see some people, they're not doing everything perfect. And some like sovereign surprise hits them. And that's the mercy, that's the grace of God, hitting someone with a sovereign surprise. And hopefully these people will get right, but they're, they're hit with blessings and we're out there laboring and these people are being hit with sovereign surprises. So some miracles in motion come from a sovereign surprise, but some miracles come from seeds that have been sown. So some are from the sovereign and some are from the seeds. And I think some of you have forgotten some of the seeds that you have sown, so I'm here to remind you. And to remind you of the seeds you've sown and remind you, you are about to reap a harvest because you will not give up. Come on, people. It's powerful, huh? See, watch. We got all this property somehow. Somebody sowed some seeds here. We have a good sound system somehow. Somebody sowed some seeds. We're in an amazing building somehow. Somebody here sowed some seeds. They picked me up in our church van. Somebody sowed some seeds. We got an amazing staff. Somebody sowed some seeds. You better clap your hands and shout. Somebody in this place. Keep on clapping. Somebody sowed some seeds. We got a pastor, Pastor Carrick, who's constantly studying, constantly moving. Some pastor sowed some seeds. Pastor Raquel's been sowing some seeds. Our associates are sowing some seeds. Our youth pastor, our children's workers. Some of our children's work workers are not getting paid. Somebody's been sowing some seeds. You've been sowing seeds and payday is on its way and you're thinking Friday is far away but you're already to Thursday. You don't understand you're about to step in to the next level. You better clap your hands and shout. You think you're always living on Monday. No, it's about to be Friday. Payday's on its way. I'm on fire, trust me. I'm here for you. I'm in Georgia for you. He who works his land shall have abundance. To work your land is the law of the harvest. Watch how simple this is. You have to plow the ground, say plow. You have to plant the seed, say plant. Then you water the seed, say water. water. And then you reap a harvest, say harvest. harvest. Okay, so watch this, say plow, plow. Plant, plant, water, water. 
harvest. harvest. Now, the plowing to even get our church to where we are right now has taken a lot of labor. So plowing is labor. It's labor. It's labor. It's work. It's, it's labor. It's frustration. It's good th times. It's, it's times that rains come. It's times that snow comes and you don't expect it. It's times that, that people may leave. You didn't expect them to leave. You, there, there's things that happen in the plowing. Some of you have been plowing so long that you just keep thinking in your mentality that that's all you do is just, you, you're just a plower. No, you, you, you've been plowing and you, you dig up the ground and then you, you get it to the right place and then you plant the right seeds. This is not a sermon to talk about your weaknesses. It's a sermon to talk about your strengths. Think of the times you've planted the correct seed. That a lot of you are smart enough to be tithers. I couldn't wait to start working my first job at 15 to be a tither. Every church that I've gone to as an adult, I was always one of the top five tithers. The first time I gave $100,000 away, I was 28 years of age. At 28, I gave $100,000 away. So watch. So you plow, and then you plant. Now, all of you have planted sacrificially, Seeds to help us be where we are as a church. But watch this. So some planted from your sacrifice, some planted from your surplus, but you still planted. But you've also planted other seeds that were not financial, but they were seeds of goodness, seeds of kindness, seeds of generosity into people. Calling people just because. Loving people just because. Caring about people just because. You reap what you... <laughs> Marilyn Hickey said to me one time, she says, do you know why people are so nice to you, Tim? Even when you've been through trouble? Because I went through a divorce many years ago, and everybody was nice to me. Because divorce is a terrible thing. And I remember Miles Monroe taking me aside. He says, little brother, I can't believe this is really happening to you. Well, it, it did happen to me. And it happened to me. And was I excited it happened to me? No, it happened to me. And Miles Monroe was trying to walk me through it. And Bishop Butler was walking me through it. And so many great leaders were walking me through it. And, and life happens. No, nobody in their right mind stands up to get married thinking, you know what, I'm going to get divorced someday. As, as a famous minister, that's what I'm going to do. But it was amazing because it was like, it was silent in the spirit world where I remember so many other ministers that would go through hardship and people just pound on them or people that in, in this and that and that. But it was almost silent. You, you had some little breakouts of, of jealous people that would say, like, you know, Tim went Hollywood and lost his marriage. I like to talk open to people, even though I'm online. I'm just talking. We need to be open people, okay? So watch this. But Marilyn Hickey said to me, and she was emotional. She says, little brother, you know one reason all this love is coming towards you? She says, because you poured into all of us. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Because when, when other ministers went through trouble, I'm one of the guys that covered everybody. And if a guy was a fool, I'd shake him up. I, I'm not saying I was letting guys get away with it. I'd shake him up. I was the brother to say, yo, you need to get it right. You need to work on that. You need to, hey, you need to. I check people too, right? But Marilyn Hickey said, Tim, you have sown into all all of us. And I started hearing this over and over. Even Kenneth Copeland came up to me. I was in Hawaii doing a big secular convention. 
And Kenneth Copeland came up to me and he said, hey, Story, look at me. I know you're trying to get out of the church world. I can feel it. Because I don't want to go where they might judge me because the world was loving me. I, mean, I was having five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand at these big business conventions. And, and Copeland said to me, don't you dare leave us. Don't you dare leave us. We are your family. You are, you are part. You should clap your hands right there. Come on. Come on, clap real big. Isn't that powerful? Do you like the honesty? Can you all handle honesty in the church? So you got to plow the ground. Say plow. You got to plant the seed. So this is not of what you have not done or the negative seed. I want you to concentrate for the next few minutes about the positive seeds that you've been planting. I, I told Pastor Carrick Butler, I said, I think one reason that I am here and that I like you so much is because of your parents. And I really believe that because I'm telling you, his parents have always been nice to me. Always been nice to me. His father would call me and find me and, and just check on me and see how I was doing. And so why do I have such a connection to him, such a love for you? Part of it is his parents. You better, you better hear this. So by his, by his parents planting seed in me, now here I come years later. Come on now. As a very cool uncle. A very hip uncle, come on somebody. A very handsome uncle. That was not in my notes. <laughs> I, got, I got in the flesh on that one. <laughs> Sorry, God. <laughs> I got on a roll. I, was like <laughs> I, I just felt my angel go, keep quiet. But I believe, watch, from his parents planting seed that there's a harvest that came forward right now where I have a connection to him where I'm like, I'm looking at him, I'm like, hey, consider this or boom, boom, boom or bam, bam, bam. Because it's like being in the NBA. I've been in the NBA for a lot of years. Say, say plow. plow. Say plant. plant. Say water. So, so watering, according to a biblical way, is when you are doing something continually. You are, you are moisturizing. You, you are watering it. Uh, it even talks about uh, the watering of the word. You're doing something continually, okay? So that's continually praying, continually fasting, continually believing. So somebody say plow. plow. Say plant. Say water, water, say harvest. harvest. So watch this. When you water, you sprinkle, you moisten, you drench for reason of growth, health, and vitality. Let me tell you something. You have been watering, and your soil is more healthy than you realize. Because we look at our this is where I'm a pro. We like to look at our faults, flaws, and failures. Ooh, I'm 12 pounds overweight. Ooh, I'm 27 pounds overweight. I'm a size 16, and I used to be a size 12. You better hear me. I'm getting wrinkles. Yeah, you're 57. Come on. There's very few women that I know that wake up and they look in the mirror and just in the, in the early in the morning and go, hey. They look at themselves and go, ooh, I got some work to do. I got to get myself together before I go to my job. Come on, are you with me? Come on, I've, I've been raised by three sisters and a mother. But just know, men do the same thing. I used to wake up when in my 20s, real spry, feeling good. The age that I'm in right now, I wake up and I was like, ah, some stuff gets injured in my sleep. <laughs> this 
this is good, all right? It's like, why did I get injured in my sleep? Can you relate a little bit? Like, Somebody say, plow, plant, water, harvest. Now, to harvest is to gather. Watch this. Go, just go like this. Watch it. Just go like this. Gather. Okay, pull it in. Pull it. But there are certain things that will try to stop you from gathering, and one is shame. I opened up about the word divorce today because I felt led to. Because some of you are stuck on divorce for your own self. But divorce is not just marriage. It could be divorce from your own family, your own siblings. It's powerful stuff, huh? From friends. See, this is what the enemy does. The enemy comes to divide. You know what it says in the Bible? It says, in the last days, there'll be wars, rumors of wars. And then it says, and many will be offended. And I used to wonder, why does it say there's going to be wars and all this stuff and rumors of war, and many will be offended? Because this is what the enemy does to divide us. He creates an offense to put you on the defense. Man, this is so powerful. So you, you go into Thanksgiving and you want to be happy with your family, but they've offended you, so the offense puts you on the defense. Somebody say, this is good teaching. So one of the things that's trying to stop you from gathering is shame. So let's take that away. The Bible says, Psalms 103, you got to read the whole chapter. It says, for God does not treat you as your sins deserve. You better clap on this side. Come on. Clap real big. You better, you, you better clap like you know it. There are things from your past that nobody knows. And don't lie in the church. And some of you keep looking behind thinking they're going to pop up and they will not pop up. Because grace You better pay attention. If you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all. From all. Say all. all. There was one fool minister one time that came up to me to try to bother me about my setback in divorce. A fool minister. Is that possible? Yes. And he had a big church. He had a big mouth. And I saw him at a convention. And he didn't know who he was dealing with because I'm, I'm straight out of Compton. <laughs> so he came with his big mouth. He came with his big mouth and he looked at me and he said, How are you doing? Since what happened, he named, he didn't, he named, well, how you doing? I just looked at him. See, sometimes the Bible says you don't even answer a fool. I just, I just went. And then I walked away. It was five years later that he ran into me in another country. The fool was in the country that I was in. He had a big church. But he came up and he apologized and he said, I can't believe.
believe. What a fool I was towards you. So self-righteous and arrogant. And they start telling me what happened to two of his kids went through divorces. Not just one. See, a fool is somebody who knows better, but they walk over the better that they know. No, that's what a fool is. A fool is somebody who knows better. That's why I call him a fool. Because he knows better. A fool is somebody who knows better, but continually walks over the better that they know. So again, watch this. You plow, say plow. Plant, water, harvest. Go like this, gather, gather, gather. So shame is going to try to come at you. Okay, shame. Offense is going to try to come at you. People are going to try to offend you. Shame. Look at me. O offense, the last one, is, this is a big one, distraction. When I teach this in front of farmers, they say to me, I mean, you, you said you're from Compton. I know you don't know that much about farming, but you are on to something, young man, because this thing about when you have plowed and you have planted and you have watered and you are, there's a lot to this, right? With pesticides and, and, and the, the fact you gotta you keep all kinds of things this way and you gotta do that and hope this happens, hope it rains. Hope, there's a lot of different things, watch. But when it's harvest, there is a season. There's a season. There's a season to gather. So you got to stay focused. Notice how the enemies try to get you distracted. Somebody clap your hands and shout. Are there any parents here? You've had children, you have children. Am I telling the truth? You could be doing well, but if your child is acting up, it could distract you. It could, it could mess with your marriage. Somebody help me. The enemy is throwing distraction, 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 and I'm coming to you as a person of God saying to you, focus because payday is on its way. It's time to gather. Somebody shout like you're catching this. Is this powerful? You feel the anointing in here? So during the pandemic, a guy like me, I, I have companies, I have businesses, I do things. But I also would speak different places. And I'd speak at amazing places. I get to speak at amazing places, but these all started getting shut down because of the pandemic. And so I was sitting back, I'm like, what am I going to do in my house? Because I, I live alone because my kids are older now. And so I talk my son into living with me. I had to fight with my own son to live in a big house. So I'm like, am I missing something? It's called free food. <laughs> it's funny, right? Oh, dad, I kind of like my own independence. I'm like... It's a pandemic. <laughs> so a miracle hit. A friend of mine said, Tim, this company wants you to life coach this company because they're going through so much in the area of fear and anxiety because of the pandemic, will you life coach this company? And then this company told me what they're gonna pay me for sitting and talking to them on Zoom. I went like this. 
It's a secular big company, like a big famous company. And then he said, well, let's no negotiate uh, the price. And I had like a smaller price in my brain because let's minimize what my speaking fee is to the secular world because I'm just sitting in a chair. And when he told me what they were gonna pay me monthly, Come on, somebody. <laughs> when he told me what they're going to pay me monthly, I just looked at him and tried to act like <laughs> that's reasonable. They were going to pay me more than if I traveled to a lot of places for sitting in a chair. So I told my friend, I said, my God, I got to get ready for this. He said, you're ready for this. We just got to get you the right notes. That's when I said I went to my nephew, Stefan, who went to O. Roberts University. I said, man, this, this company hired me to pay me all this money. We got to get our notes official. Because <laughs> now I'm talking to this big company. It's a big company. And so I, I'm now the executive life coach of the big company. And I'm like, okay, point A, and the notes are rolling down. <laughs> point B, point C. And everyone's like, oh my God, this guy's amazing. What a life coach. And then this company found out, and then this company found out, and then this company found out. You better clap your hands. That's called reaping what you sowed. Come on, keep shouting. See, pastor, that's all those years of when somebody with a church of 7,000 would invite me and I'd say, I really wish I could, but I can't because I'm going to this church of 63 people. Because when I was getting over a thousand invitations a year from churches, I just said that, a thousand. Even though the big guy said, you just go to the big ones, you'll touch more people. The Lord said, that's not what I said. You go where I tell you so you can go help somebody's cousin. You better clap your hands and shout. Come on. Come on, come on, let's rock. Come on, Georgia, let's rock. So God says, look at my son. It's a pandemic. Let him sit on a chair. And act like I've done it before. Like, so let's look at section eight now. Let's tell them the group. Let's look at section eight. The CEO was like, we ain't seen nothing like this. The people are loving you. They are loving you. You are the greatest life coach, executive life coach. And now that's a, a big part of my career now. I sit on a chair and have these Zoom meetings and everybody gets all marveled. <laughs> Some powerful stuff, huh? Five more minutes of this watch, say plow. plow. Plant, Plant. Water. water, harvest, harvest. say gather. <laughs> Watch this. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Proverbs 10, 4. You better stop putting yourself down. I don't have what I thought. It didn't turn out like I thought. The Bible says diligent hands 
bring wealth. You say, well, when's it going to hit? I just told you, your miracle's in motion. All it takes is one person in your family to do something amazing that you didn't expect to shift the whole tide. All it takes is one invention. All it takes is one book. Some of you that are not even writers, God can inspire you to write a book that all of us know we have to read. You better clap your hands like you just caught that. Come on, clap like you just caught it. Come on, people. The Bible says, watch, unrelenting disappointment can make you heart sick. Watch, but a sudden good break can turn your life around. So I'm going to ask my keyboard player to come up. So watch this. Somebody say, a sudden good break is about to turn my life around. So watch this. Let me, let me, let me tell you what's going to happen. Watch. You're about, look at me. You're about to get a break that comes. And you're going to come through the break. And then you're going to bring your family through the break. Come on, keep clapping. I'm done preaching. Somebody clap your hands like God's powerful. Come on, stand up and clap your hands like God's powerful. Clap your hands like he's powerful. Come on and clap your hands. Come on and shout a little bit. A sudden good break. Keep on clapping for a minute. I said a sudden good break. Hey! How many sense the Lord in here? Miracles are in this place. You watching online, miracles are in this place. Some of you are going to feel a release. Some of you are going to cry. Some of you are going to feel joy. You guys have planted so many seeds. You're going to gather. Some of us have planted so many seeds in our children. We played hurt and we never told them we were in pain while we were raising them. I just talked to my 93-year-old mother before I came here. She's powerful. She's 93. She said to me, Timmy, thank you. Everywhere I go. She goes, I went to the doctor the other day. And, and he said, I can't believe that you're really Tim Story's mother. And she said, all the time. <laughs> wow. She's 93. She's so blessed. Her house is paid off. We used to be poor. She lives in a great neighborhood. Everything's paid. It's nothing but the Lord. Amen. Wow. Your miracle's in motion. Here's a Tim Storyism. Reach up and pull it down. Shh. See, the miracle's in motion, but sometimes you got to go reach up and pull it down. Shh. I ran into my friend Donnie McClurkin. We've known each other since the 80s. Me, him, and B.B. Winans, we've done everything together. Been all over the world. Conferences. But Donnie saw me in the airport, and he walked up to me, and he didn't say a word. He just stood up. He's taller than me, and he just went like this. He just went. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Reach up. Pull it down. Hey. (sighs) 
Financial miracles are coming. You should clap your hands, they're coming. Family miracles are coming. Come on, keep on clapping. I said they're coming. Emotional miracles are coming. Keep on clapping just for a minute. Thank you, God. Somebody say, thank you, God. Give me somebody who's been fighting depression. You, you've been fighting depression. It's been hard for you to break depression. Just lift your hands. You've been fighting. There's going to be a lot of you in a crowd this big. Miss way in the back. Come up here. Yes. Come as quick as you can. And the rest of you guys can sit. And in this meeting, we'll be done in not so long. On weeknights, I don't go that long. You brought the kids? Did you come Sunday? Yeah. So let's just do this. Just close your eyes. Just say, thank you, Jesus, for my amazing children. So kids, look at this. You see how awesome your mother is? Okay. God's going to touch her in a very cool way right now, very supernatural way. So mom, look at that power go through you. One, two, three. Boom. Through you. And touch the kids. Here, touch my hand. Touch Tim Story's hand. Close your eyes. Touch Tim Story's hand. Close your eyes. So watch how we, I free you. Watch. Free. Okay? There's somebody else. Depression. You, you're having a hard time breaking it. Lift your hand. But come quick. I love this church. Just lift your hands. Close your eyes. Just lift. Boom. Lift it off her. God, lift it off her. Boom. Through you. Raquel, come and touch her in the stomach. Boom. Through you. Free. Free. So we wave your hands to Jesus. Don't try to get up. You got a great life going on. Healed. Boom. It went through you. He's right behind you. Boom. Thank you guys for coming tonight. Appreciate who you are. Come together and hold hands. Payday's on its way. Hold hands as, hold his hand. Hold his hand as you walk up. And I need the ushers close. Look towards me. Lift your hands. Hold hands. Close your eyes. They've known me since the Morris Cirillo days. I started speaking for Morris Cirillo when I'm in my 20s, mid, mid 20s. Close your eyes. Miracles. Harvest, 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 harvest. Healed. Harvest. Somebody clap your hands like he's awesome. Come on and clap your hands, all you people. Jesus. Jesus. Keep clapping. Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
Hey, you three kids, come up. You'll like this. Come here. Keep on clapping. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You, you guys come right here just like that, okay? Turn this way towards Uncle Tim. Turn this way towards me, okay? Give me your hand. Breathe in. It's not how they respond on the outside. I know what's going on the inside. White shirt. You guys did good. Where's my ushers? You see I'm flowing. You got to always be way right behind. Come a little closer. Boom. Boom. Take the whole thing. Take the whole thing. Lay down in it. Clap your hands and shout. Let's go. Man, this is powerful. How are you related to him? Okay, your life's going to be awesome. You don't need to meet me to even touch you right now because you know what to do. But your life is going to be awesome. So step into awesome. So who else is with you? We got you and who else? Okay. Bring your great aunt. She's getting healed. Somebody clap your hands like God's power. Come on, shout a little bit. Come on, shout unto God. Come on, Georgia. Let's go, God. Help people. In Jesus' name, bring her over here. Miss, we fixed everything. We fixed all seven areas. Throw your arms up and walk. Walk like you're 23. We fixed it all. Walk like you're 23. Somebody shout like the harvest is here. Shout like the harvest is here. Go back. Throw your arms up. Give the enemy a heart attack for what he's trying to do to you. Healing is flowing through your stomach. Healing is flowing through people's heart. High blood pressure, lupus, blood diseases, cancer. In the name of Jesus, be broken off, people. Somebody clap your hands. Healing is in the house. Come on, keep clapping. I said healing is in the house. I said healing is in the house. Come on, miracles are in the house. Come here. How much better do you feel? When was the last time you felt this good like this? But how long would you say? Years, years. How many years do you think? At least 10, 15. You got it all. I don't need any more. You got seven areas. Go ahead. Thanks for coming to church. Thanks for bringing her up. Thanks for bringing her. And to the son, just keep following me, okay? Because you got it. You got the good stuff. Don't you worry. You're good. So you don't always have to lay hands on somebody right there. You just got to speak it to them. Sometimes Jesus spoke the word. So here's what I'm sensing. Does anybody, would, would anybody want me to go one more night? One more night. I want you to clap if, if you'd be open to it. Okay, so, so, because we're family, let me explain something. I have to leave Wednesday. There's, I can't get out of it. I have to leave Wednesday because I have a job. <laughs> okay, so, so Tuesday, tomorrow night would be a night of concentration where I break you all the way into this message. You see how I've been building. 
Okay. This I know how to do. I know how to build faith. That's why you would see Oral Roberts in the front row. You would see Joyce Myers in the front row. Because they say no one can do what Tim's story is doing. So here I am in this situation building your faith. But I'm only going to stay if you bring some people. How many of you will do your best to bring some people that need a breakthrough? Lift your hands. Okay. We, we could have such an amazing miracle night tomorrow night. How many of you are excited about this? It's just, just one night. And then you got to put me on a plane, okay? Because I got a job. Are you excited about this? And, and we'll, we'll, we'll end on time. We'll, we'll, we'll end like, you know, 8.30 at night, 8.40 latest. Because we got people, got kids, you got moving parts. But see, this, these seasons where God flows like this, we got to pay attention. Okay? God is with us, people. I prophesied to you tonight, this is your season to gather. Payday is here. Clap your hands and shout. Come on, shout real big. Come on, people. Go ahead and stand up and clap. Give our pastor a big clap. Listen, he's going to take an offering for this church and for what's going on in this meeting, in this revival, okay? But let's be generous givers so we can continue to do what we're doing at this church. And also your generosity will help me to go do what we're doing. So we're just going to do one big offering today. But how many believe that as we give, it will come back to us. Come on, wave. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I, I'm telling you, I might tell you guys in the back room how much money they gave me. I mean, I was sat in the chair. And I'm so glad I didn't say the amount I was going to give. He said, well, how much would this service be? I had no idea because I'd never done that service. Come on, somebody. And I, but I had a thought in my mind. I was, I was about to say it. And I'm so glad I didn't say it. Because what he said next. <laughs> did I tell you that God's going to do some things in your life that are so amazing, it's going to seem weird. Someone wave your hand. Give our pastor a big clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. My oh my. <laughs> You can be seated in the presence of God. If you need an offering envelope to assist with your giving tonight, you'll see one in the seat pocket in front of you. If you're watching online, you can give by going to FCCGA.com. But if you need an offering envelope to assist with your giving in this house, you'll see it in the seat pocket in front of you. If you're giving by credit card or debit card via the envelope, sign the appropriate portion, put the amount in the box above. So let's put your telephone number on there just in case we need to reach you. If you want to give online, you can do so by going to FCCGA.com. Or if you want to give by text, so put it on the screen, you can text FCCGA to 73256. If you want to give by text, you'll see it on the screen, you can text FCCGA to 73256. And so there's two different areas I want you to pay attention to on the envelope or online or via text. You'll see the spot for offering, and that goes to what we need to do here at this house. Amen? But then you see a spot where it says gift for, and that's where we're going to be a blessing to Brother Tim. Amen? And so as you heard him say, we got to do two things tonight. Anybody believe you can walk and chew gum at the same time? So as you prepare your gift, just give whatever the Holy Ghost is telling you to give. Whether you're writing it on the envelope or typing it online or via text. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in your generosity tonight. We know Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken, gather, run to over. So God calls people to give back to you. We know Galatians 6, how you're reaping eternal life. Not the qu quantity of life, but the quality of life. 
We know 2 Corinthians 9, abundance of waves and overflow of grace heading your way. And so as you give tonight, expect a harvest. Expect a miracle. And aren't you so glad we have one more night? I'm glad you're enjoying it because I'm enjoying it. Because if y'all don't get what God has for you, I'm going to get what God has for me. Praise God. I don't know about you, but these last three sessions have been exactly what I needed. I'm so grateful for what God is doing and his goodness and his love towards us. Praise the Lord. So tomorrow night we'll be right back here at 7 p.m. And so for those of you who are watching online and can make it here, make sure that you're here. I got some texts from different people who are watching other states who won't be able to get here in time. But if you can get here, you should be here. Amen? For those of you who are here, you believe that people should get here. If they should get here, amen? amen. Praise God. Well, most of you look like you're ready to give. Let's present our gifts to God in prayer. If you're here by online or via text, you can lift your phone or the envelope if you're giving physically. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We present our tithe, the offering, our seed to you. We ask this, use it mightily. We give generously. We give liberally, believing for a biblical return. Angels go forth, bring a harvest unto us for need for our sake and the sake of the gospel. We declare that all the needs of this ministry and Brother Tim's ministry are met with abundance beside. We have more than enough to do what you called us to do. We're overflowing to every good work, as it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. So receive more of the blessing God it is, concepts and insights, and your favor being poured out upon our lives. Life. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise for it. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. If you're giving physically, you can come to the altar now and uh, present your gift. Thank you for your faithful generosity. Minister Camilla, wish we had written that song already. Money is moving. Money is shaking. Strongholds are breaking. That's coming. Amen. heaven. I bless you in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you, you shall condemn in judgment for that is your heritage and you are the righteous of God in Christ Jesus. May the blessing of God increase in your life. May every house be paid off, every car paid off, every student loan, medical bill, credit card paid off, release jobs, better jobs, promotion, inheritance, checks in the mail, God ideas, concepts, and insights. May the favor of God surround you as a shield. Before people encounter you, they encounter the favor of God. Have favor in the courtroom, favor in the boardroom, favor in the sales for favor in the classroom. May the favor of God go before you and prosper your way and build you a platform that when you speak to the lost and backslidden, they want to know what you have to say. You're able to win them to Lord Jesus Christ and bring them home to faith. May the healing power of God continually surge your body, deliver from every sickness, every disease, every pain, every infirmity, every spirit infirmity, every virus, every variant. May you be healed, restored to health, and made immune. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your heart and mind. May you experience the mental health Jesus purchased for you in the cross of Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen, and so be it. Pastor Kurt will dismiss you appropriately. I love you so much. See you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Hallelujah. God is good. And all the time. 
Amen, amen. A few side announcements and we will be dismissed. Uh, remember, our ministers and prayer texts will be available at the altar as we dismiss today to pray for you. Um, if you have any prayer requests or if you would like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And uh, also, you can stop by the table in the lobby to get information about events and meetings happening here at Faith. And if you are a first-time guest, or if you made a decision for Jesus today, please give your completed connection card to our hospitality team as you leave the sanctuary. All right, stand to your feet and repeat after me. Say, I am miracle-minded. I expect miracles to flow in my life. And I know that when I leave out, I'm going to run dead smack into one. In Jesus' name, amen. You all are dismissed.